Hi guys, it's Ali with Geek on Gadgets and this is a look at Windows 10 technical preview for phones. So Windows 10 technical preview for phones was released earlier today for a select number of phones, mainly the 630 and its variants, the 730 and the 830. So we have a 635 here running Windows 10 Technical Preview 2, and we're going to take a deep look at what's new in it. So first off, of course, is the new um, live tiles and home screens. The live tiles are superimposed on the background image instead of the background image being part of the live tiles. So they appear kind of floating on top of the live tiles, which is cool. Another change in the live tiles, of course, is the new Another change in the live tiles, of course, is the new live tile sizes. As you can see here, there's two new sizes, a large square size um, and a long rectangular size. Now, these new sizes are only available for select apps and tiles, mainly the People Hub and Cortana. So you can switch between People Hub sizes from small to large rectangle, to large square to, to long rectangle, back to wide rectangle. So you have a large variety of style, tile sizes. As mentioned, this is only available for some tiles. The same is available for Cortana, although apparently right now the large tile size has no information on it, even though the small and large rectangle have, but the large square does not carry any Cortana information, which is kind of weird, but then again, this is a technical preview. The other main uh, UI change in the thing, of course, is the inclusion of a new notification center and action center. So first of all, you'll notice down here that the notifications um, from wherever you have, have an option to expand the notifications to see them completely. So if this was a five line email or a notification, I could completely see the message here. Up top, you'll also notice that the action center itself now carries more than four or five action tiles. And it carries basically almost as much as you want. And you also have the option for all settings. We'll get into that in a bit. Regarding notifications as well, notifications now appear in a new look. As you can see here, let me send my mouse, myself a message. And up top, you'll see the notification appeared in a new look. However, currently you cannot actually respond to notifications in line. Um, although it, that might be just for, mess uh, for messaging or maybe for some parts of the app that aren't available right now or aren't in this technical preview. Uh, however, unfortunately, I don't have a SIM to place in the phone and therefore I cannot check if it works for messages or not or WhatsApp for a matter of fact. So sorry about that, guys. So back into the settings over here, we can click on the all settings button to head into the settings. And the settings, as you can see, have been radically changed. It's still kind of difficult to get the hang of, but it is a lot nicer than before. So we'll take this bit by bit and we'll go into complete details here. So up top, first of all, we have these screen settings. So for it's for screen, notification, search, and battery. So under display, we can see the brightness level and rotation lock. Under notifications and action, you have the action center notifications and the notifications for each individual app. Now for the action center notifications, currently there doesn't seem to be a way to organize these this list of um, notifications here. So I really don't know how to do that, but we can collapse and expand them and you can change the upper four, these right here. But besides that, I really don't know how to rearrange or reorder these right here. So it's kind of weird. Anyways, we in display, there's Cortana and search, which hasn't changed much, but the white background is added, but most of the, the settings are the same. You have the customized Cortana to learn your name and your information, and it doesn't seem to be working right now, but that's fine. We have speech settings, which allows you to choose which speech language or region you have. Um, it's kind of buggy right now, I guess, so because it's not showing me the option to use the US, or it doesn't give you the option to download new speeches from here, which is weird. Here's the Cortana settings finally open. That was a bit weird. So Cortana also has the option to now detect tracking info such as flights and packages. Packages were not available before. So now we can activate that and it'll track my packages as well. You can manage your search settings and manage Bing search history in the cloud, manage my Microsoft account, general Cortana and search settings and more. And it just kicked me back into the main settings. So if we go to storage sense, it's the same storage sense that was before, nothing new here. 
maps are a new, it's a new map app of course but it also has the maps data where you can check for updates and download new maps or delete all your maps you can manage your map settings from here and for the new maps app of course you have find my phone on it which can use push notifications say my phone's notification location office um the settings for office haven't changed much even though office has been completely revamped for windows 10 to provide a more uh, heavier user experience photos and camera you have the option to add locations so we'll turn that on automatically upload photos and cameras same thing as before upload videos launching cameras you can choose which camera app to launch with press and hold camera button to wake up the phone which is a bit redundant since the 635 does not have a camera button but we'll keep that on whatever under wallet we have the option to add boarding passes here as well now so I, I believe I saw that before store boarding passes tickets deals and more and USB ask before connecting to USB data connection and notify me when I'm using a slow charger also under about you'll see that the Windows Phone Lumia 630 you know this is a uh, Oh, sorry, this is a 630, not 635. And the Windows 10 technical preview for phones. So that was all in system. So you see how complex or layered in the menu is. All that was part of the system's settings. Then we have the device settings for Bluetooth, protect my screen and keyboard. So I project my screen using the uh, Microsoft projector app. Keyboard, you can add keyboards, download languages and change it. And you'll notice here, just one thing I want to point out is the right clicking now is more like um, as if you right click and something pops up where you right clicked it. So it doesn't just uh, a general menu. It's like long clicking is a right click. So the option to remove pops up where you press your finger down, which is a bit interesting. I just found that cool. So back out of devices, we have network and wireless. Wi-Fi will take you to your normal Wi-Fi settings. Nothing new here. Airplane mode, same thing. Cellular and SIM. Uh, I don't have a SIM in here, so nothing I can do here. Data sense, nothing new. Sorry. We have VPN, uh, which takes me back to the Cortana settings somehow. Okay, that was a bit confusing. So we were in networks and wireless, VPN, and internet sharing, same thing. We can head into personalization, which we can organize our backgrounds, similar as before, add or show, show or remove more tiles, such as uh, in previous 8.1 versions, but you can notice here, one difference is the new tile sizes down here. You can also remove the background or browse for backgrounds, including OneDrive libraries, sounds, you can adjust the sounds and ringtones available. You'll see some parts of the OS here don't have something really visible here. I think it's uh, like you see right there, that was a click, but it didn't show. It's kind of weird. Anyways, for lock screen, we can adjust our lock screen as well. Same as before, choosing your background through the apps, health, fitness, app, social, Facebook, photo, show art as well, playing, and we can customize the uh, apps that show on the home screen, of course. And for theme, we can choose the dark or light theme and the theme color. Theme colors are pretty much the same. I think there's a new color in there somewhere, but I haven't memorized them. Into accounts, this is where you can add your accounts or emails, same as before. These are the available add account options. So Exchange, Yahoo Mail, Google, iCloud, other, and more. And we have sync settings for the theme, apps, settings, Internet Explorer, passwords. Time and language, you can adjust your date and time. Same as before, nothing new here. Language, also same as before. And region is same as before. Ease of access, nothing new here. Privacy, location, advertising ID, accessory apps, speech, inking, and typing. Get to know me so this right here is um, collecting information about contact, speech, and handwriting patterns to help Cortana be more useful. So that's cool. Clear info from the device. So basically learning your typing patterns and uh, your voice patterns. So that's useful. We have privacy, which we already went in there, sorry. Then you have update and recovery, which is the option to phone update. Checking for updates as usual and the backup. Sorry, let's check out the backup. 
which has nothing new as well. And of course you also have the extras, which is basically all the Nokia related stuff. So here you have motion data, Nokia account, touch, audio, call and SMS filter, display, and these are all basically the same, nothing new here at all. So we're not going to go into that. So going back to the home screen after finally finishing the settings menu, also another change is the new apps where if you install an app, it'll show up on top here as recently installed. So um, if we head into the store, and just install anything. So we'll just install this app. Back there. Now, one thing I'll, I was really at, happy about actually was the new keyboard on Windows 10. So as you can see here, there's the keyboard, which should have swipe, but I don't think I have it enabled. So um, we're going to go back and enable that. But we also have the new text, text to speech anywhere in the OS. So you can dictate your voice anywhere. So we'll just say CNN.com. And it got that pretty well. And you can just, uh, you know, go back or there. Another feature you'll notice is this little dot here which is actually um, a little cursor which helps you fine-tune your navigation. Sorry. So if we click on there, we have the up, you see those four arrows which show which direction you're moving in, so it's easier to navigate across the thing. So if we focus on text, which is kind of difficult right now, sorry about that. You can see the cursor is kind of jumping around there. I don't know if you guys can see that or not, but okay. As you can see, the swipe typing is working in Arabic, but because I haven't downloaded the English settings, it's not there. Now, one thing that uh, was demoed on stage was the Skype chat integration or API into the Windows messaging thread, but this currently is not available in Technical Preview 2. So maybe we'll see that in future messaging uh, or future upgrades, but currently it's not available. One of the new apps in this is actually a sound recorder app. So you have a simple sound recorder app that basically just record sound and it's something that was missing in Windows Phone. So if we have that tap the record sound, you can see here we have a pause button, I guess, or a, a, a clip button or save a flag in the middle of your recording and the pause and stop button. And you can see your recordings here. Tap, tap the record sound. And I hate listening to my voice, but you can also trim the recordings, delete them or rename them. So another change in Windows 10 is Cortana, which now runs in a uh, all white theme background. And uh, so let's ask her anything. So um, who won the Super Bowl? So um, yeah, apparently she didn't search that. Who won the Super Bowl? So the searches aren't working for some reason right now. It's showing quick STD tests. So, but you'll notice that the search results are a bit different. Where now, um, it appears to be displaying a Bing page instead of the actual swipe panels that were uh, previously available, and uh, that's not kind of that's not really cool. Anyways, um, here we have uh, we can see Cortana settings. From here we have the notebooks, reminders, places, quiet hours, and settings, as well as Cortana Home. So we go back to Cortana Home. It's the same usual Cortana, except now she automatically shows you what you're interested in, your news articles, and you know the usual. And you'll notice down here we have the Cortana feedback button, so you can share your feedback, suggest like and dislike about Cortana. And basically, let's try that again. Who's the president of the United States? So searches aren't working right now. So um, if you really use Cortana, you guys want to be careful. Anyway, so that's Cortana on Windows 10. Another change we have is in the File Explorer app. So it's one of the best apps, in my opinion, on the Windows 10. It'll show you basically everything on this device or recent, and you can quickly jump from place to place. In pictures, you can do camera roll, select images, and uh, move, copy, delete, rename, properties, etc., etc. You can move up in the folders. You can go back to the root menu as if, as if you're like on a PC and you always have this menu on the side. You have the option to show thumbnails, select new folders and search. And under properties, you can see the properties of each device, uh, you sorry, each folder, how many folders it contains when it was created. So basically almost everything you can see in a file manager on PC, which is really cool. 
As you can see here, now the recently installed app is up top for Phototastic Collage, and that happens a lot to me where I install new apps and completely forget about them, so that's a cool feature. Under Photos, we have the normal gallery, but the difference now is that the photo gallery can now sync to your online account. So if we go to a collection, or so if we hit the settings button, sorry, in the hamburger menu, you have the option to go to settings, and when photos have online, you have the online sync. So you can remove duplicating photos, and you also have the option to select which photos show on the recent tile, which isn't working, and you can show photos and videos from OneDrive. So if we activate that, our, ca our gallery will sync with the OneDrive gallery, and you'll see it'll start downloading them. So give that a second. Of course, you have the new select button, which is kind of cool. You can either share or delete them. And nope, you can share or delete them. And notice how the little delete and share things pop up here. So instead of the whole menu popping up, only a tiny bit of it pops up. So this is still getting photos from OneDrive. So. In the alarms app, you'll notice a new redesigned alarm app. You can turn on the alarm itself, turn it off. You have a world clock in here which was basically the World Clock app from Microsoft before. We have a timer app for a countdown and a stopwatch. So if we want to set a new alarm, we currently don't have the Windows 10 alarm circular thing, so which is kind of weird. But anyways. So if we go back to photos here, we can also go by album. So albums are coming soon, not available yet. And you can go to folders. Folder view is also coming soon, not available in this preview. And under settings, you can see the same settings we just saw before. So this is my Outlook inbox. Currently, I, I haven't found out how to get the new Outlook email app that was displayed before. So um, I'll probably do a video showing that by itself, but that's kind of weird. Of course, we have the new Office apps as well, which I'm not sure are available. So if I try running a Office app here, PowerPoint, downloading from my OneDrive, of course. So we have the presentation view here, but editing it doesn't seem to be the full editor that Joe demoed online, so I don't know what's up with that. If we head into music and view the music player, it seems to be the same music player that was available before. So that's pretty much it for what's new in the Windows 10 technical preview too. So there's a lot of features that aren't available yet and some features that I can't find, um, and there's lots to cover. So, I mean, this could, video could be an hour long easily. So some features that I can't find or sh haven't been able to demo is the ability to move the keyboard around the screen like we saw Joe do with his uh, Windows 1520, with Lumia 1520. I can't find the option to do that. I also can't find the new Outlook app or the new Office apps, which is kind of weird as they should be available. Also available, not in this build, as mentioned, is the Skype APIs into the actual messaging system. And um, I'm sure there are a lot more features that are to come. But for now, this was a preview of what's new. And the main difference really is the start screen, the notification center, and the redesigned settings. And of course, the uh, collapsible replies and whatnot. And it should be able to reply through messages, something I can't do since I don't have a SIM card in here. So uh, once again, this is a preview, lots of bugs in it, and it's not for the average user. But I hope you guys found the video useful. Um, please, if you did, like, comment, subscribe, and leave your thoughts on Windows 10 for phones, and I'll see you guys around. Thanks for watching.